This is the Unearthing Art Podcast with Michelle Luminato and Beck Lee, where we dig into the messy reality of making art that matters, raw and real conversations about being an artist, navigating the creative process, and expressing our honest and sometimes weird selves. We're at episode 22, Michelle, and I think that doing the podcast has really brought out, accelerated, I would say, growth in a way for both of us because we've been diving into these conversations, discovering new things along the way. And in the last episode, I feel like we were really beginning to bring up some foundational beliefs that we have about making art, about being artists in the world. And I was interested to keep diving into that and to keep articulating those foundational beliefs because I think that's had a lot to do with what we've been developing how I've been developing as an artist over the last year um, and also in how we're supporting other artists I can honestly say nothing like doing a project to put you through all sorts of growth and I think this podcast has been a massive accelerator for lots of things. And one of the things I think has been really helpful is the more you talk about things that you're going through, mm-hmm. the more you really start having these meta experiences mm-hmm. where you're literally living through it. And the podcast has definitely been one of those things for me because talking with you every week, um, there's something that happens besides we laugh a lot, obviously. Yeah. But I also, I learn from talking with you about things, about like what are the different struggles that different artists have. And for me, that's really rewarding because I just, I learned from that myself mm-hmm. and I learned what I could be doing differently in my studio. But I think the other thing that I learn is I learn where I'm also um, needing to uncover more things about myself that I want to share with more people and for you know I think the funniest part of this thing because you're gonna laugh when you hear this is I just feel like I've done so much assuming that people think the same way that I do in terms of like how their studio practice looks like or you know like I think I've done a lot of discounting of my process because I think I just assume people are already doing what I'm doing in the process. So you're saying, Michelle, that you've been discounting your authentic, original, unique perspective? (laughs) Yes, and this is the funniest part because this is what I totally believe in teaching people is how to be your authentic self, how do we bring that to market? And when I put other artists' feet to the fire and say, dig into who you are, and then I look and like, well, what am I not doing that I'm kind of you know bearing or sort of ignoring and neglecting it is a funny thing that the more you talk with others work with others and um and this is i guess specifically around teaching or supporting people with whatever talents you have the amazing thing is that you're helping them and they take something of value out of that but it's so often that you're also taking something of value, like each mm-hmm. each um, connection and exchange actually unearths something that you maybe didn't know about yourself, that you were capable of. It's like a mirror. And, and for me, it's been like, I'm like, yeah, just do this thing. And then I'm like, huh, what would that look like if I put that mirror against myself? What are those things? Mm-hmm. And so, That's um, it. and I have to say, like, I'm a huge believer, and I know you are a b- big believer in this too, is that I've got the growth mindset. I always am looking at how can I learn from this experience, even when I'm teaching or even when mm-hmm. I'm talking with you on the podcast. I learn from those experiences. And mm-hmm. so it's not missed on me when I share something with someone and they have a ha or <laughs> when uh-huh. I share something and <laughs> <laughs> when they have, when when I share something and they have a, <laughs> an aha moment, I always look at it like, is there something here that I could have an aha moment on as well? Totally, like, that does not go missed on me. Yeah. So, um, and it's just occurred to me this <laughs> this is going to sound silly, but I it's just occurred to me that probably that part of the reason that is is because what we're witnessing in in other people are struggles that we have as well. 
uncertainty, self-consciousness, being fearful of judgment and and all those very human things that we all share. And when we see that happening in other people, in other artists, we do our very best, we draw on our very best resources to give them the reassurance and, you know, practical support that's going to allow them to move through that because we see in others a beauty and a richness and a talent and a gift that we want to help them get out. But, and and we, and now I'm saying everyone, we yeah. don't often give ourselves that same level of generosity. Oh, yeah, when totally. When we work with other people, we actually get to see ourselves in action and go, hey, if we can be that, the same way as if, you know, you had a friend who was struggling with a particular thing. You don't say to that friend, oh, well, you better pull yourself up from the bootstraps. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. You bring to bear all those what you have to, to help them forward. And then afterwards, you might just pause and say, hang on, maybe I should bring that same level of kindness and generosity to myself. I'd say the biggest aha moment I've had over the last 22 episodes Mm -hmm. And actually all those times we've talked before we even launched, by the way, because Mm -hmm. we were like, what does this actually look like? I've really discounted. And when I say discount, like just kind of ignored these things Mm. about myself and my um, past experiences and the and how that builds into the way I'm I'm thinking as as valuable resources that are useful to me and others. And so. Um, what I guess I'm saying, and this is like, there's a lot of things that we have that are within us Mm -hmm. that we just don't acknowledge and give credit to. Yeah. And one of those big shifts is I've really, um, again, thanks to working with artists and having this podcast so we can talk about this is I've really realized there was a lot of pieces that I haven't shared about, um, the way I approach an art business in mm. tandem to making my most authentic work. Yeah. And um, in the past, I've had a membership over the last few years because we were in lockdown and it was really around sharing my studio practice, but it wasn't the whole picture, mm. wasn't the whole creative cycle. And so there has there's an expansion here that I want to bring to the surface. Yeah. And so that that literally has been happening over the last six weeks in a real 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 time like way of bringing to life more of the process and so one of the things that's shifted is there's a membership now that i have to say i'm super proud of we've just done an internal release too with current members and it's an expanded um, version of what has been such an amazing foundation for what we've started around inspiration to creation and in terms of like the art practice and what those you know what I would consider more hard skills as far as like paints and practical things and studio practices but one of the huge missing pieces that I've discovered with working with artists more is that there's this authentic core piece mm. that I feel like we've we just skimmed the surface on and we've literally skimmed the surface here in the podcast. Yeah. Um, but it's it's about unpacking what we really are as as human beings. And when I say artist, I mean like everything we do is creative. When you look at the podcast, you look at this creative membership that I have, that's a creative process that's come from my own creativity as well and your mm. creativity. Um, and what I really feel like is difficult and the struggles of artists is really for us to figure out what is that authentic core that's like the juicy stuff that's in there and it's so buried and so internal um, but it's also a little bit difficult to look at it's way easier to look at like let's just talk about paints yeah because paints are easier and the internal stuff um even though it feels a little bit harder. And I guess through this podcast, we've talked a lot about that, like the struggle of how do we dig deeper, Mm -hmm. but it's so much more rewarding as, as a artist. And I have to say for me, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this, like, I just have had such a big, this is it moment. I've come home in the full circle way Mm -hmm. of, I've always wanted to help artists. And this feels like such a right fit for me for who mm. I am and how I want to show up in the world. Yeah. Um, 
And so anyway, sorry, I derailed a little bit on that tangent. I know that, as you've just said, it's very important to you. One of, I think, your core beliefs, you could say, is that we have within us these um, authentic, and we've talked about the word authentic, that can be a little overused at times, but these kind of very deep, unique to us perspectives, um, understandings, creativeness that we have the ability to express and share with the world. And that can take different forms. Like you're saying, it can, it can be expressed through art. It can be expressed through teaching. It can be expressed through a business. It's what you turn that into in a kind of physical sense in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious how you see, because I'm going to put you on the spot now. As you do, we love to put each other on the spot. Are you able now to acknowledge what you have to offer as something that's different, as a way of helping people who aren't being helped in other ways? Yes. And that's honestly, I have to say, because one of my core beliefs is how do we how do we be ourselves and how do we come to market in a way that we do stand out and that we can help people in a different way? I actually feel like it's much easier to, well, for one, be ourselves, even though mm. it feels a little scary. I think it's much easier to be ourselves um, because it's very high maintenance to, I'm not, I'm not good at being high maintenance in the sense <laughs> of pretending that I like small talk pretending you know to be something I'm not like it's just for me it feels like too much effort you know as far as what that would look like um, and I also think that because I've worked with a lot of products in like we're talking thousands and thousands and it's actually mm. easier to sell things that stand out from the crowd mm. um, and so my core core to the bone belief is that the more we can be unique as artists and the more we can bubble up what that looks like um, we can stand out in the market and help people in a different way and so yes i can say i feel like it's come full circle for me because i feel like i've tapped in tapped into that in my art practice um, but i did not yet feel previous to the last probably two months that I had tapped into that, into the teaching. Like I always felt like mm. there was something that had to come out um, that I was uncertain about. Same process of uncertainty, same vulnerability, same self-doubt, all the stuff. I mean, like for real, all the yeah. stuff. Um, and it was, it was messy. And it was messy in the sense because I had to get really clear on what I stood for, what mm. I believed in, um, and and let go of some other and stuff. And let go, exactly. And I guess the hardest part, what I'd say about that is I also had to let go of um, feeling like I might disappoint people or offend people if, if I did go down a more narrow focus on what I really believe in. And yep. I know that sounds, um, I don't know if that sounds harsh or how it comes across, but that was a tough pill to swallow for me because mm -hmm. I'm like a, a recovering people pleaser. And and when I say recovering, like I still always find myself wanting to people please. Michelle, I'm going to step in here a little bit to say, I think you're a down to the bones people helper. So <laughs> I know I've seen you in action. You see people who are, you know, feeling confused or feeling lost and you're like, I got to help these people. So I think that that's where your teaching comes from, like originally at a really foundational level. It's it's like you're seeing people, I don't think it's too much of an overstatement to say when you see someone in pain, you're like, I, I got to run. I got to help that person. And I'm, I'm sure I know how to help that person. And I think that what I sort of see is that when you, started that sort of first step that you took which was how can I help people in a studio sense and and build this framework that that supports people and I think that just like you've described um, this expansion that you've had in recent months 
is realizing that you ha- were helping up to a certain point in the journey, but then you were seeing people struggle after that or mm. around that. And you're like, hmm, there's, there's pieces missing there's and a- I, need, I need to mm-hmm. find a way to continue this. And yeah, it's tough because in doing that, any kind of creative that you are, anything that you're sharing with the world, we have to kind of come to that hard point where we can't serve everyone. And this is a thing that like you can't be liked by everyone. And this is at every level. This is like when you're making art, if you think that you can make paintings and you say, who do you want to be a collector of your paintings? I want everyone to collect my paintings. I want everyone to love my paintings. You're going to end up with very bland paintings because yes that that no one in particular is going to feel a great attraction to is going to feel a great connection to because it's just so everywhere so I think it's really important and and part of that process that you are now saying who who are the really specific people with these kinds of beliefs and perhaps I think people um, like me who aren't necessarily finding the kind of support that works for them just like a collector is looking around in the gallery going yeah this is this is good but I'm not finding that particular piece that I connect to it's like you know artists who aren't finding that particular kind of processes or frameworks or ways of learning because there (laughs) there's a hundred different kinds of artists in the world Absolutely. And yeah. I also would say um, that's where I think, I think in the last episode, I'm like, we got to get our shit together. And I was definitely mm-hmm. talking about myself as well, like coming clean with who we can really serve, whether that's creating a piece of art or whether that's some other creative outlet, um, mm-hmm. whether it's teaching or anything for that matter, the more, and I teach this, like logically i know it i teach that the more unique you can be you can better serve your messaging gets better the offer is better for the person buying it like it's just better it works better in the market and Mm -hmm. yet we have to come clean with who we are what we stand for and what that looks like and so for me it was coming clean with like I want to help people who want to dig into their authentic core like who they really are to the bones Mm -hmm. that seeps out Um, no matter what kind of mood board you have because it's about that real deep level stuff. Mm -hmm. And I also want to help them come to market with things that are unique and create systems for themselves so that they can really build on those things. And Mm. what I want to say about that is I think we get caught up in like, is this the right way? Are we doing this right? And the reality is it everything builds upon one another. But for me, my life has definitely been building on each other. And I'm at that point now where I can see it in a way that I have a mirror in front of me, thanks to Beck and all the artists that I help, <laughs> and kind of help me see that mirror of like, oh, this is stuff that I can bubble up that can be useful and I can help serve other people. When I mean serve other people, it's like, you know, our art helps people in one way or another, whether yes. we understand that or not teaching people helps in one way or another. And so, yeah, so I think that my, the beliefs that I have now are, I'm more interested in creating a business um, that aligns with who I am Mm -hmm. to the core. Um, And that looks different than what a lot of people are doing. And part of my uncomfortableness, and I'm gonna be completely transparent, is I go against the grain of what a lot of people do in their art practice and the way they make a living in art. And I'm gonna say that because I've created lots of um, art businesses and products where I really went down a path of making work that I was trying to please the market, trying to please the market. And at the end of the day, it was not satisfying to my soul. Mm -hmm. Um, The money was there but I personally was not satisfied. I was also creative, creatively bankrupt because um, I just was spitting out stuff, spitting out stuff. And it just literally was that place that I came to was like, this is not it. This is not, this doesn't align with who I am. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of 
for me personally, and again, I'm not saying this is the only way, this is just how I do it, is I want to build a business around being as authentic as possible that fills my soul up at the same time because I like to feel good beyond money. I like to feel good about the work I'm doing. I like to be connected to it. I like to have deeper conversations, as you can tell by this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess that's really what this new membership is all about, is around Mm -hmm. building authentic art businesses that may not look like high-speed production um, in the sense of like, let's pump out a painting you know, and, and like, how do we sell a painting every day on Instagram? That's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. This is about being in tune with how do we tap into a deeper level of making work we really care about so we can find people who care about it as much as we care about it. Does Mm. that make sense? Yeah. Like a deeper satisfaction. Yes. Um, there's, you know, a lot of advice in in the world at the moment about all sorts of things about you know how, how we live our best lives and um and for artists how how we should be selling and how we should be doing this and that the great thing about being connected the way we are now in the world is that we have the opportunity to find like-minded people people yes. who have um similar beliefs who are <laughs> dare I say, built in, in a similar way to us so that we can draw strength from each other, draw wisdom from each other and kind of operate at our own best level. And yes. to be really specific about it, what I'm saying is that taking myself as an artist, I can and was moving through the world and taking different courses or interacting with different teachers and not necessarily and you know following people on Instagram and reading things that they were posting listening to podcasts and only in small parts was I occasionally able to find the snippets of things that felt really true to me and that's not because those people were wrong And it's not because those teachings or those courses were wrong. There are other artists for whom they were really resonant and they're like, yep, this is making a lot of sense to me. This is in tune with my mindset, with my beliefs, and it works for me. But for it works for them. But for me, Beck, I was struggling to make the connections on my own. And I was also struggling to find something that sounded like it would be what I could use, you know, something that I could connect into. So mm-hmm. to me, it's really important that now that I found this connection with you, Michelle, and we can talk more about that at a, yep. <laughs> at a specifically at a different <laughs> time, but it's really important to me that what I found through you was what I was specifically looking for, which was some frameworks to really dig in and find a way of making art that was really satisfying to me and didn't feel like an empty process Mm -hmm. honestly that's if I was to put it into words I needed to find a way as much as I wanted things just to be easy you know just to be Mm -hmm. able to turn out some paintings and sell some paintings as much as I wanted to try and make myself do that (laughs) and I can imagine what Michelle thought at that time she's like why is this girl doing this to herself I was trying to make myself do that but I couldn't and it, it, that way wasn't working for me. And now I'm finding a way that does work for me and it's really, it com- comes with it a lot of energy and excitement. And I think that's what I see um, in this expansion of what you're teaching as well, Michelle, is that it's so natural because there's a poem by William Stafford that talks about the thread that comes through our lives and a lot of people have written about this the idea that there's a Mm -hmm. thread that runs through your life and when you can find that thread you can follow it through ups and downs you know whatever happens it's a it's something that you can hold on to that kind of tethers you 
in a in a good way that grounds you and mm-hmm. i think what you are discovering now is that um as you described starting with this idea of studio practice and and, and finding you know an, an authentic core for that and now when you're expanding out and saying oh, hey i've got these skills in in these other areas um i've got these practices that i've been putting into place in terms of what comes next in the artist journey, other aspects of selling and and how you build your business. To me, what's so important is it's still grounded in that thread. It's not a separate, it's not it's a separate not, module. No. It's not a separate thing that you go and do. You say, hey, how do you take that energy and kind of joy you found in creating art that is so resonant to yourself and then carry that through so that resonance carries through in everything you're doing in the world exactly. beyond the studio because that's how you bring your energy out in all the other aspects. This is the part that for me, you know, it's about even selling authentically as well. Totally. And it's finding a way to make those connections because if you're doing these actions and it feels out of alignment and you're you're like everyone tells me i needed to be doing this thing and yet i can't bring myself to do it there's a, there to me what i've experienced is it's a, it's an alignment problem i'm not in alignment with it and even if i know logically like yes that's worked for them if i'm not in alignment with it i'm not going to do it my subconscious is going to pull me down and I, shut me down. <laughs> I cannot agree with you anymore. <laughs> the, I could not express the amount that I agree with that. Um, because I know from my background, which is working with people to create those marketing messages. And um, this is something that I'm really, again, clarifying through the conversations that we're having and clarifying even more by using those skills with artists so this is really wonderful for me as well I've always felt that writing about our work whatever that work is whatever we're sharing honestly it can be literally it can be pieces of art it can be you know a book that you're wanting to share with the world it can be services that you're sharing with the world as a consultant or a coach whatever it is there's a spark that needs to be there for the really the most um, effective messaging and the most effective way of sharing that with the world. And that spark is a real belief in the work, a real, yes. a real authentic personal belief in the work. And I can see now in the way that we're talking about this with artists is that spark comes from being in touch with that thread and being grounded in that thread when you're you know creating the art because if if two artists come to me and one says I don't really have the words for this this thing that I'm making but it moves me deeply like I really feel it in my chest or I really feel it in my gut and it's it's it could be something about oh I don't know maybe something about this maybe something I'm not sure I can be a hundred percent confident that we can bring out just a wonderful moving story that's going to connect with people from that versus another artist who comes and says I've made these lovely paintings um you know, we've talked about this before, but they're on trend. A lot of people are out shopping for this kind of thing. I just need to put some words on it so that I can put it on a gallery wall. Can you just come up with some words to go with this art? Like it's yeah, just just any words. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't. That's not it. I And I think that just goes to show there it's two different approaches. Mm. And again, one, what I want to say about that is some people are perfectly happy doing it that other way of you know, Absolutely. following the trends. And and like I have studied trends for a paid living. Like I totally get trends. And to be honest, and I really feel like this gonna this could sound against the grain, but it's it would be way easier for me to say, let me just show you how to paint the trends, slap some words on there, um, because it, it seems easier. But it's not really. It's it's like having a one trick pony. Um, you you know, you kinda have to find that next trick. Yeah. 
It's not easier. I want to be super clear about this too. Oh, this is good stuff because Beck <laughs> is always helping with the words. It's not easier to go to sleep at night when you're doing that because you get a creative... Well, let let me be try and be even more clear about that. It would not yeah. be easy for Michelle and I and people who share the similar kind of values and beliefs that we do, which are not the only values and beliefs to have in the world. But for people like us um, and people like, I know a lot of people who are listening because you're sharing and commenting and telling us what's going on in your art life, it would not be easier for us to sleep at night and to get into the studio each morning because that wouldn't be fulfilling and satisfying. And what Michelle is saying is it would not be easier to go out and sell that work if you feel that way it about it so it's easier, both sides but it's like, not, yeah. it's not just about being fulfilling and satisfying in yourself which is super important by the way but we're not just being kind of like I don't know what is it is it like airy fairy woo woo like we need to yeah. we need to feel ourselves we're also speaking from the experience of being a copywriter and a product um, creator and working for big companies, it's not the way you actually get out there and sell great work either. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, and and I think there's something I want to speak to about creative burnout as well. I know that yes. it might not be happening to everyone, but there's two ways we can make more money as artists. One is to make a lot of work and the volume of that is how you sell, like through the quantity. Mm. Um, and the other way is to increase the value of it, which would be requiring like increasing the pricing. Those are the two ways to make mm -hmm. more money, right? Mm -hmm. So if I look at like me producing more quantity, like pumping out the work like a factory, that's just not an option for me to do yeah. because I don't feel good doing that. And I know what's involved to do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that as artists, we have to look at like, what's our business model? What does it really look like? And there, there's a fork in the road where we have to make decisions of what that business model looks like based on who we are, what we're all about. And if you're a deep thinker, like Beck and myself. And a deep and, feeler. <laughs> and a deep feeler, I'm highly sensitive as well. And someone for whom I would say as well that distinguishes it, someone for whom they find that their art, your art, is very integrated and connected with the person you are. And making art is an expression of something that you want to do with your life as opposed yes. to, um, and I think this can change over the course of an artist's career as well. Like you can yep. start off deciding that um, making art is going to be an occupation like a job that you do between this hour and that hour and you want to have certain inputs and certain commercial outputs and it's it's very much a job and then someone for whom you are continuing to pursue this art because you really don't feel you have another choice with who you are and and the life that you want to live and we've talked about this like because you're choosing a creative life a life of expression. I think that has something to do with it as well. I would say too, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I, I, that's a good way to say it. A life of expression, a life of self-expression. Mm -hmm. And it is personally tied to who we are, I think. Um, where the other one, I feel like, um, and I, I don't, again, I say this because I really don't like offending people. It's in my core blood not to want to offend people. <laughs> but I also know that it's a different mindset to be yeah. a creative, expressive artist who wants to create things and sell it. It's different from making art just to sell it. Yeah. There's a there's a difference because I and I've done both. And, and I and I do believe that sometimes you know, it is a deeper level that we get to from that experience. Like the only reason I know I want to do more authentic work is because I've already done the work that doesn't feel like that. What we're talking about is it's not like a, hey, how do you sell a quick painting? How do you hop on and sell a painting a day? You know, that's mm -hmm. not the kind of program that I'm putting together. And I know that, um, and by the way, I just want to say like Beck, there's so much to talk about with what Beck is contributing to what's going on in my world. I'd like to speak into that on another podcast, but it's, 
it's only because we go through these experiences that we can let go of things. And what I've personally mm-hmm. let go of is I don't have to make work that burns me out because the volume and the intensity of that production is so high. I have nothing left in me. That's it. I can actually honor myself. I can feed my soul. I can do things that allow me to also raise the price because it's more unique to who I am and what I'm all about. Yeah. And you can carry that through and create the systems and choose the systems through into the selling process, into the um, sharing with others process so that that is also not draining, not feeling like you're on a hamster wheel of chasing a trend. Because just as the way there's trends in um, making the art, there's also trends in the marketing and how it's shared and how it's sold. And you don't have to follow the ones that don't work for you and you can still be commercially viable. Yeah, I think that's the thing too. And I was thinking the exact same thing is I, I think that when artists are thinking about selling or making authentic work, they're like, oh, but nobody's going to buy it. Yeah. And it's actually not separate. It's it's all the same, but it's around personalizing that experience for yourself and the consumer who's buying it mm-hmm. and understanding what they're getting from it and making that um available for them in a way that makes sense for them you yes. know but that you resonate with this is it this is the gold bit because this is the bit i'm really excited about this is the bit you're bringing in and extending into your new membership now because you have this knowledge <laughs> and this experience and you're like why haven't i been why showing have i not been showing my this authentic stuff? artists how to do that for themselves how to make those choices really smart choices um and customize and have their own way of yes. of bringing things to market of selling um, that's what I'm, I'm really excited about that not only that but here's the beauty of it all it's it's such a deep well that when you get the hang of this you can make money on anything mm. like it literally is in tune with who you are and it doesn't have to be limited to just paintings i'm a living example of that Um, Mm. You know, like I not only have figured out what my authentic art is about and how that's going to come to market in a more real way that matters to me, but I can also come out in the form of other things. This podcast is an example of one. The membership Mm -hmm. is an example of one. And that's because that's my authentic core. Like 20 years ago, probably even longer, I was like, I want to help other artists solve Mm. these problems because it just is in my blood to help people. Mm. And I'm so excited because now I'm like, oh my gosh, now I can actually do it in a way that resonates with me and hopefully resonates with other people. But it's just occurred to me, I think we've been talking about it for close to an hour now. Have we actually shared the name of this new expanded membership with everyone? Yes, I don't think we have. And I'm really excited about the name because to me, it's such a big shift in what I'm doing Mm -hmm. that um, I wanted to name it something that felt really connected to our authentic selves, the origin. And so Mm -hmm. the membership is called Origin Art and it just feels like home. So if you hear us talking about Origin Art, you're hearing us talk about the membership that Beck and I um, support artists in. So yeah, Yeah. super excited. And I will say that people are going to hear us talk about it. And I know that it can be a little awkward at times. Like people feel like every time you mention a membership that it's because you're trying to (laughs) somehow sales pitch through the podcast or that kind of thing genuinely as I think you can tell by the way we've talked this is a creative project that both of us really believe in and that we are putting a lot of creative heart into at the moment so I think it's only natural in a podcast talking about the creative process to somehow exclude it would actually feel very weird and um non-authentic to me because yeah every day I'm thinking I'm thinking about how does you know that fit in with our framework how are we sharing that and so it really is a, a bit of a window for me alongside my artistic expression this is another expression a way of thinking about what we want to share with the world how we want to reach people make an impact 
that's what's important yes. to me i'm speaking for myself now that's that's how i think about it day to day like the impact that i'm having today like the, the actual gut level what i believe how am i working on that today how am i thinking about it and um at the moment it's it's through my art it's through the podcast and it's through origin art that's yeah. kind of where we both are isn't it yeah we are talking about how we want to be our authentic selves and to mm. exclude it is like it's like saying i'm going to only talk about paintings but i'm not going to talk about all these other creative things that have manifested because i've been authentic to myself like that's yeah. the that's the power of the whole thing I'm in total agreeance with Beck, if that's a word, um, that I really have always wanted to make an impact on artists and help them. And being able to do that with Beck um, through this podcast and the membership just has been super rewarding. So yes, it is part of the process. And the cool thing is, whether you're in the membership or not, we are learning from listening to both conversations in terms mm -hmm. of growing and it's all a thread that goes together absolutely that's exactly what's happening it's just a genuinely what our creative process together is at the moment it's a a really happy fertile cross-pollinating <laughs> Yes. So Garden here's the, the here's another spoiler <laughs> alert. If you don't like us and our podcast, you're not going to like the membership because yeah, yeah, we sure. <laughs> pretty much are the same on the front end as we are on the back end. It's all us. It's all us. Yes. We can't be anything else. Whenever we try to be not us and and uh, we end up feeling really awkward and then <laughs> <laughs> not making that public, don't we? We're like, no, that felt yes. awkward. Let's just talk about what's really going on for us and what we're really working on and thinking and how we're growing. And this is how we're growing. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> thank you, Michelle. I love it. I love it too. One of the things that I think is obvious from this episode and just about everything that Michelle and I do is that we are endlessly interested in the why, in the thinking and the exploring and the decision making that ultimately shapes what you create and how you create as an artist. That entire process can be very different for each artist and we must each craft our own way, which at times can feel really difficult and uncertain. But by showing up here and being transparent about our creative process and learning, because we are all learning all the time, Michelle and I really hope you are encouraged to dig deeper into your own authentic expression. And if, as I talked about, you have had trouble finding the kind of guidance and frameworks for growth that resonate with what and how you want to create as an artist, then we welcome you to find out more about Origin Art and how you can get early access to the membership. The link is in our show notes. Thanks for listening and catch you next time. <laughs>